Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making a fun little treat, a little dessert. Um, this will be perfect for Christmas or whatever kind of holiday stuff you have going on. I've never made these before, so we're going to be making them together for the first time. This, I think this would be a really easy thing to make if you, if you're not used to like making stuff yourself from scratch. I think you could do this very easily. They are, we're going to be making pecan pie balls. We're going to be making balls. We're going to make, we're going to make so many balls today. It's going to be awful. <laughs> um, <clears throat> We're going to be making so many balls today. It's going to be awesome. So these are called pecan pie balls because they're supposed to taste like pecan pie. Now, if you've never had pecan pie, you might not have anything to compare it to. I have had pecan pie. I personally really like pecan pie. I haven't had any in a while. But the thought of making balls, just little bite-sized balls that taste like pecan pie, and they're coated in chocolate too, that sounded really tasty. I thought we have to try this. And you don't have to bake it. There's no baking involved whatsoever. Basically, it's just a matter of mixing some stuff up, putting it into a ball, rolling it into a ball, stick it in the freezer for an hour, then get it out and dip it in some melted chocolate. Now, this recipe does have a lot of options, a lot of substitutions, a lot of things you can do differently. You don't have to make it exactly like the recipe you know, says here, you can substitute things like you can add bourbon to it. You can use different types of chocolate to dip it in. You can use different types of nuts. If you don't have maple syrup, there's maple syrup in it. If you don't have maple syrup, it says you can use Cairo syrup. So most of these ingredients are very basic. They're very simple ingredients and there are not a lot of ingredients. And most of these, I would think for most people would be pretty easy to find. And that's one thing I try to do with these videos. I try to come up and I try to find recipes that have simple ingredients and simple instructions. So if you've never cooked, you've never made anything before, it's a great place to start. And you could do this. Anybody can do this. I will put the link to this recipe in the description. I always just like to have it in paper form. Now I will tell you for this recipe, if you just hit print, there's not a printer friendly option or I didn't see one. Um, it's 21 pages. Don't just hit print. I really only needed three of those 21 pages. Um, now I want to tell you a few little things about this. You can make bourbon pecan balls. You could just swap out some of the maple syrup for bourbon. I'm not doing that. I'm just sticking to the recipe. For the chocolate coating, we're going to be using chocolate almond bark. And I just picked this up at Walmart. This is, and you're going to need a 24 ounce block of almond bark. Now I haven't, I haven't made anything with this stuff in a long time. So it's, I'm going to have to kind of relearn how this works, but it's microwavable. We do have to melt this because obviously if you want to dip the balls in it, it's got to be melted. So we're using that, but you can use chocolate chips, you know, a bar of chocolate. You can use white chocolate. Anything you want to, you just melt it. Whatever you want to dip them in, you can go with that. You know what might be good? Some of those butterscotch chips. Dipping it in that might be interesting. It says to add some shortening to the chips or chocolate bars to make the chocolate mixture smoother. If you're doing that. You can also dip them in the balls in white almond bark or melted white chocolate. You can also decorate them with sprinkles, like little Christmas sprinkles. Um... We'll see if, I, I, I'm going to look and see if I have any sprinkles. It wasn't listed in the ingredients, so I didn't think to get any. If I don't have any, I'll go get some while they're chilling in the freezer. <laughs> this recipe makes about three to four dozen balls, depending on how big you make them. Obviously, if you make, if you got big balls, you're not going to get as many. <laughs> mm. You want to store this candy in an airtight container once it's all done. The candy can be easily frozen, stored in the refrigerator, or at room temperature if you'll be eating them within a day or two. The candy balls will last about a month in an airtight container stored in the refrigerator. So you don't have to eat them right away if you make them. Um, you don't have to eat them right away. Now I'm going to tell you what goes into this, but you don't have to memorize it because it's going to be, the link to this will be in the description if you want to pull it up later. 
you're gonna need two and a half cups of finely chopped pecans but oh, sorry they say you need two and a half cups of finely chopped pecan halves I just went ahead and bought some chopped pecans and you don't need this many um, this is this is way more than you need but I love these as a snack so I went ahead and just got this big bag it's a value pack uh, 24 ounces so that's six cups so that's way more but I love to take some pecans and sprinkle them on a pan and put them in the oven at 350 just bake them you got to keep an eye on them because they will burn just for a few minutes take them out and they're lightly toasted mm. and it's really good on top of like yogurt or something like that and I eat them just the way they are I think they're delicious so I'm going to use some of these for the recipe and the rest of them I'm just going to I'm just going to eat them so we do have pecans for this recipe I bought a fresh bag because I realized I was out we also need a cup of graham cracker crumbs. Now, I was at Walmart yesterday, and normally they have, you can buy a box of Keebler graham cracker crumbs. They probably sweep them up off the floor in there. I'm kidding. They didn't have any, so I just went ahead and grabbed this box of just regular honey graham crackers. It's the Great Value brand. I mean, you can, you can get the brand name, but honestly, it's graham crackers. I don't I buy this, I buy store brand graham crackers because I can't really tell a difference in the taste. If you prefer a particular brand, that's totally fine. I don't really care. So I'm going to just take some of these and I'm going to make my own crumbs. Now you can do it in a food processor if you want to. And I did pull out my food processor for this. I have just a little Black & Decker Fresh Prep One Touch Chopper. So you can, you can cut it, you can cut stuff up as finely as you want, and you can just pulse it. I probably won't even use that, though. I will probably just take some of these graham crackers, stick them in a, a Ziploc bag, and, and I have this rolling pin right here. You can roll it, you can hit it, you could take a little meat tenderizer and break, however you want to do it. You could squish them with your hands. It's actually very therapeutic. I find it very fun to squish them myself. It's just something nice about it. <laughs> Get out any frustrations over the holidays you may have. You could take your fist and just however you want to pulverize them, but you ultimately want to end up with graham cracker crumbs. So, but if you, if you don't want to do that, you may be able to find a box of graham cracker crumbs at your local supermarket. They just didn't have any yesterday. We also need a cup of brown sugar. Now it doesn't specify whether you need light brown sugar or dark. I have some of this light brown sugar that's left over from another little recipe we did. So um, you only need a cup, so I have plenty, just a cup. You need a teaspoon of vanilla. And here I have my stone mill. This is pure vanilla extract. And I purchased this at Aldi and it's, it's wonderful. I use their extracts all the time. I think they're really good. And we need four to six melted, uh, four to six tablespoons of melted butter if needed. It said that you may need that to kind of get the consistency of the balls the way you want it. If they're a little crumbly, you can add a little bit of melted butter and make it make it stick together a little better. And also, as I mentioned previously, you will need this 24 ounce block of almond bark. This is just great value. This was about $3.50 this almond bark. Oh, you also need uh, a half of a cup of maple syrup. So I picked up this Maple Grove Farms organic 100% pure maple syrup. You get whatever you want to, it doesn't matter. I just found the smallest one they had and the cheapest. This was the smallest and cheapest bottle they had at the store yesterday. We don't really eat a lot of, we don't eat maple syrup here, so I mean, it will get used up, but it's from Vermont. It's a very nice little, little jar of maple syrup. Although the, the notes do say if you if you don't have maple syrup or you don't want to use it, you can also use Cairo syrup in place of the maple syrup. Okay, so wouldn't this be fun? Like if you've been invited to a little gathering or something and you don't know what to take, wouldn't that be just so cool to be able to walk in there with your balls on a plate? Just have a nice little serving tray, have your balls on them. I think that'd really make an impression on people. So really, and this is so simple, 
just this little bit of work right here is all you have to do. It's There's nothing to it. You don't have to bake anything. You don't have to do anything crazy. Um, some people get intimidated by melting chocolate. I know I used to. Um, the thought of having to melt chocolate as part of a recipe was kind of scary for some reason. It's very simple. You can do it in the microwave. I'm pointing at that. You can do it in the microwave. Um, I'll probably melt mine in the microwave. So what we, need, what we want to do first is combine pretty much everything except for the butter unless we need it and the almond bark. So we're going to mix it all together. But the first thing I have to do is make some graham cracker crumbs and I think I'm just going to take these and use the food processor to kind of cut these up a little bit. But let's go ahead and get started making our balls. We have our graham crackers here. You take them out of the package and they come in these little plastic sleeves. Now these are just plain honey graham crackers. You can get other flavors like cinnamon and stuff like that. These are just regular. Now again, you can put these in the food processor. You can buy graham cracker crumbs already crumbled up. But I just like to take them and stick them in a Ziploc bag. And then you can just go over them like a steamroller with a with an, a rolling pin. I just think that's fun, personally. So we're going to take these out. We're going to go ahead and put them in this bag. Oh dear, they're, they're just completely... <laughs> They're just completely broken. Oh no, what will we do? <laughs> Fortunately, in this case, it's all right, but if I had bought these, I'd be kind of ticked off about that. If I had bought them just for something else, I'd be like, what? Now, how many of these does it take to make a cup of crumbs? I have no idea. I'm just going to crush some up. I think that would be a cup. Let's just add a little bit more. Now you want to make sure you seal your bag. Okay. And you can use a, a can or whatever you got, or you could just beat on it with a meat tenderizer or what. It doesn't matter. You can squish them up with your hands. And there we have our graham cracker crumbs. And I'm going to measure that and see if we have a cup. Well, I measured it out and it was almost exactly a cup. So if you're doing this with regular graham crackers, I guess you would need almost an entire little sleeve of the crackers if you're crushing them up to get about a, a, to get a cup of the crumbs. Okay. Oh, and I, I don't have my mixing bowls to show you today because we're not, we're not doing any, I'm showing them to you anyway. Hang on. It just feels wrong doing a video like this without showing you my bowls. I should use this one to put my crumbs in. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Look at these beautiful mixing bowls. I always show these off because I just think they're so pretty. Look at the pretty colors. There are four, as you can see, and they just nest inside of each other, and it's really nice. Oh, look at the pretty colors on them. It's like little speckles in a bluebird's egg, especially this one. I bought these at an antique store, but they're not antiques. You can buy these online. They have them on Amazon and other places. They're from Zach Designs, Z-A-K, exclamation point. And we use these all the time. Now, some of the comments on Amazon say, you know, are they cracked or are they broke? I never put these in the dishwasher. I hand wash them and I don't expose them to extremes of heat and cold because they are that Melmac stuff and uh, and they don't, they're not going to hold up to a lot of extremes of temperature. So we have this pretty green one, orange, and blue, and this little one here. I should have used this for the crumbs. I didn't, I, I've never used this one. I messed up. what I wanted to show you was these little measuring cups. I bought these at Aldi. Look how, look how cute these are. You have a quarter cup here and it has the little spout. 
the little thing for and we have a third of a cup and see there are different colors and I got these in a little set at Aldi for $5.99 half a cup this one's kind of a peachy color and then the one cup is like a little coffee cup and I like that it has a handle on it that's really great aren't they just the cutest little and they were only $5.99 for the whole little set and I, I, I got them not too long ago and I, I couldn't wait to show you <laughs> so we'll actually use this to measure out our maple syrup now let's see I need a half a cup of maple syrup so I'm gonna need this one here okay half a cup I've got my maple syrup here smells really nice. Now you do want to refrigerate these after you open them. And it shows you there's a little line in there that shows you where to go to with it. It's like a cup of tea. But it's not. Okay. I just picked up this big bowl here. I don't know how big the bowl needs to be. We need to combine the chopped pecans now I have these here, and now I did do these in my little chopper. I didn't do this by hand. This is two and a half cups of chopped pecans. There. Um, our graham cracker crumbs. Brown sugar. I have a cup of brown sugar. Vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla. And finally, our maple syrup. That smells good already. Now we want to stir all of this together to combine it. Okay, I'm just going to take this and break up that brown sugar and start stirring. enough to form a ball or not. Now my hands are clean. I'm going to just try one. It's a bit crumbly. So I'm going to get some butter. We're going to add a little bit of added butter to that. You know, it said you would need four to six tablespoons of melted butter. Well, if needed, four to six tablespoons. This is about five tablespoons. I'm just going to add in about half of that and see if that does it. better mm. I mean it kind of holds a ball I guess it does you can't if you try to do that it just comes apart but you can kind of squish it like that and see too we're gonna be putting our balls in the freezer for an hour so that will help firm our balls up even more so yeah I mean I, th I think this will I think this will work I think that looks good. I don't think we need any more butter. Okay, so we're ready to make some balls here. 
Now, my problem, I have a particular problem with my freezer. My freezer is tiny. My refrigerator is small because my house is weird and the opening for the refrigerator is quite small. So in order to make it larger, it would involve taking out cabinets and, bar and counter space. And Anyway, my refrigerator is a side-by-side. -side. The freezer section is literally this wide, going up and down. So I cannot, it says to put these on cookie sheets and put them in the freezer for an hour. I cannot do that because a cookie sheet will never fit in my, my freezer. Literally, something like this will fit. So I have just taken some little containers and, and you're going to line them with parchment paper like I've done here. There's just a little piece of parchment paper in there that you're going to set your balls on. And um, I have this one long tray here. It's from Pier 1 Imports. I've had it for a long time. This will fit in one of the on one of the shelves, but part of the problem is too I have food in there, so I'm having to work around the stuff that's in the freezer. <laughs> so this may be a little challenge for you, but if you have the same issue I do, you can always just take a little container like this, place your pa or the parchment paper in there. I just cut it down to kind of fit. You could just put your balls on something like that. I think this is a good size. I mean, it, you know, you can make them different sizes. And I will admit, I, I tasted a little bit of this. It is so, it's delicious just like it is. It is so yummy. And it really does taste like pecan pie. I mean, it's it's incredible. It's, it's yummy just like it is. So we're gonna be coating this with our chocolate bark stuff. But honestly, I think it's good just this, the way it is right now. It's good just the way it is right now. I'm just squishing them together like that because they're going to be covered in that the chocolate bark stuff so I don't think it matters a whole lot. Ooh, that's a big ball. Take some of that ball out. They don't look too appealing, I know, but they taste really good. And it's such simple ingredients. We don't have anything crazy in here. I don't guess it'll matter if the balls knock into one another. Does that matter? Like if, you know, say I go to put them in the freezer and I tip the container a little bit and one of the balls just happens to slide into the other one. Would that, oh, would that matter, you think? Where'd you come from here? They look like sausage balls, just glancing at them. And they definitely don't taste like it. one batch and then do another batch in the freezer because really I don't have room. We could squish these in a little bit. We could do three balls per row. I don't think that would matter.
few in there. So I would think this is the most involved part of this recipe. It's just doing this. I guess I should try a little harder to make them ball shaped. They're kind of all over the place. I mean, I could try doing that. Actually, now with the butter, it seems to hold. Oh, that looks prettier. I should have been doing them like that. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe that one was just a little different. Yeah, they, they, okay. Maybe they don't hold up to that. A little, a little more butter might be all right, but I don't know. And you don't have to bake these. <laughs> it's pretty great. Okay, well my balls may not be much to look at, but I'm gonna go pop them in the freezer for one hour and then we will come back and see how they did. Okay, they have now spent an hour in the freezer. They're definitely more firm, but I wouldn't want to handle them too roughly. Um, I looked around online to see if I could find a good way to dip these into the chocolate stuff. We have the chocolate flavored candy coating here that I'm going to be melting. And I, I, from what I read, a good way to do it is take a two pronged fork and rest it on the, you know, between the prongs, dip it in the chocolate, you know, tap it on the bowl, set it down. I don't have a two pronged fork 
and I've gone through all of my utensils and I don't really have anything except this spaghetti thing here. It's not ideal. I mean, I guess I could do it by hand. I really don't know. I don't know. I might just try this because I don't really have anything else. And at Aldi, I found these. I went to Aldi while they were in the freezer. I found these sprinkles. Look at all these. It's the Betty Crocker's Christmas mix. Look at that blue sugar. Goodness gracious. You know that's healthy. Look at all that stars, red and white bits, sprinkles. I think I'll just go with these red, white, and green ones. And these blue and white ones here. And red and green. So you have a little top, you know, a little opening up here for the, each one you can open. So I'll probably go with that after they've um, had time to firm up. But what I need to do now is go melt this. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to put it in a microwave safe bowl. I have this big glass bowl. I'm going to put it in there and we're going to melt it. And then we are going to, we're going to dip, we're going to take our balls and dip them in this chocolate flavored candy coating. Okay. I have melted our chocolate flavored candy coating here. It looks like pudding. <laughs> so, um, my hands are clean. I know this is stupid and I'm sure there are better ways. I wish I had the two pronged fork because I kind of feel like that would work better. That's like the most disgusting meatball I have ever seen. <laughs> okay. So then you just, I have just a drying rack over here and I've placed wax paper on it. I'm just using this to manipulate it in the melted candy coating. Like I'm making lovely drizzles in the bowl. And <laughs> it's actually not so bad. Look, roll. It took a little bit to melt the chocolate flavored candy coating. But you just, you, you heat it for 60, uh, 60 minutes, 60 seconds on high and you stir it up a little bit. It actually didn't melt much in 60 seconds. I broke the, I broke it up, you know, I broke it up and put it into pieces in the bowl. And, uh, and then I did it for 60 seconds and, um, I took it out and just kind of, well, the, there really wasn't anything to stir. It wasn't melted enough to stir it. And then I just did it in 60, I'm oh, sorry. 15 second increments after that first 60 seconds and it did great okay maybe the two pronged fork would be better but this actually isn't so bad this isn't so bad yeah I'm making a little bit of a mess but this is fun <laughs> okay So, actually, if I want to put sprinkles on there, I might better do that before they harden too much. I have opened up this. And they're going to go everywhere. Look, those have already hardened so much, they're not sticking. Well, these will be for people who don't like sprinkles. Okay. I will probably need to sprinkle each row as I finish them. Yes, I think so. It's love and spoon. There we go. Yeah, putting them in the freezer definitely firmed them up quite a bit. Four. Get off. Thank you. And sprinkle. There we go. I can't believe I don't have a two pronged fork. And 
I never thought I would utter that sentence, but here we are. Well, that one's super coated. <laughs> I think that's the one I managed to roll kind of round. Get off the spoon. Thank you. That's not a spoon. It's a spaghetti fork. A pasta. You know, the spaghetti thing. I had another one of these that I liked better, but the handle broke. It was insanely old and it finally just broke and there was no fixing it. I like this too because you can shake it back and forth and it doesn't come out. Yeah, you don't have to use the chocolate flavored candy coating. You can actually use um, chocolate chips or whatever. I kind of want to try this with butterscotch chips. I just, I just wonder what that would taste like. They really do look like sausage balls. <laughs> That's a big ball right there. Okay, I have a few more. I'm going to set up another thing like this. Okay. It's staying melty for a lovely period of time. I was afraid I would have to pop it back in the microwave, but so far I haven't had to do that. So it's doing great. It's doing really great. sausage balls. <laughs> it's weird.
last one. And there we have it, our pecan pie balls. Now we just have to let this, the chocolate coating firm up and then we'll try one or two or three. <laughs> okay, we're all done with our balls. We have our balls ready. We got our balls out on a plate. Look at this. They're beautiful. They turned out great. So, of course, we coated them with these red, green, and white little sprinkles. Um, and they look so pretty. Look at that. Now, you can make this. You could absolutely do this. You could have these ready in no time. Now, that chocolate-flavored candy coating did great. It firmed up very quickly. You don't have to wait long at all for it to firm up. So, look at that. I think we need to try one of these here. Let me find one of the ugly ones. I don't want to... Well, I mean, they're all kind of misshapen, but, you know, I'll just take this one right here. So we have these little balls. Very happy with them. Oh, they're very firm. And this one has a little foot. <laughs> see what these taste like. I don't know where to bite it. Does it matter? Mmm. That's nice. And the insides really do taste like pecan pie. They do. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that coating though. It's nice and firm. It's like that magic shell stuff you put on ice cream and it hardens up. I think it's basically this stuff right here. I mean, it's good. I just wonder if these will be better coated with um, actual chocolate, like um, melted chocolate chips or something. I mean, this is good, don't get me wrong. And it was very easy, it was super simple. So easy to melt and dip, very easy to do. Mm. So there we have it, our pecan pie balls. And you don't have to bake anything don't have to do anything crazy very simple ingredients very simple process I will put a link to this recipe in the description if you're interested in checking it out so simple so if you've ever wanted to try making something like this you totally can I know you could do this and Walter approves he's he's very happy you can tell by his face look, look how happy he is he's very happy um yeah Pecan pie balls. Wow. They are very delicious. And of course, you can modify this recipe any way you need to. You could try different stuff to coat it, different stuff inside of it. You can do any number of things with this recipe. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed getting to see these little pecan pie balls come into being. Oh, I do like them. Oh my goodness. These are going to a family function, so they're not going to waste. <laughs> And thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.